So okay. I'll just I'll just begin by welcoming Marjorie Perlow to uh, to the SCE uh, interview series. We have a series now. Oh, we have a series now. Okay. Yeah. Um, uh, I think you are our third. <laughs> okay. Um, um, I, I want to start off by by asking you if you remember your involvement with the Society for Critical Exchange from quite a few years back. I believe you did a paper. I um. I don't think so. Did I? Maybe I did. Literary I, affiliations I, or affiliations? Oh, literary affiliations? Was yeah. that the Society of Credit? I, I that was for Simplicate. Right. And so is that the same thing? And Simplicate ended it, up being sort of the publishing arm. That's right. For SCE. And I used to go to all the things at MLA, too, and go yeah. to their meetings. Right, yeah. right. You know, go to their meetings and things, although they were always very radical, more radical than I am. <laughs> <laughs> Well, what got me thinking uh, that you were involved is that I saw your name in the membership database. Yeah, and, uh, I did. I yeah, was a member. Yeah. yeah great. Yeah. Uh, well, um, uh, back in 76, speaking of you know, being a radical, uh, <laughs> uh, uh, James uh, uh, Sosnowski and, and Leroy Searle in 76, they wanted to establish the SCE uh, uh, as a response to, uh, this is uh, uh, the way David Shumway puts it, the anarchic proliferation of critical systems and languages. Huh. Um, now, 30 some years later, uh, how would you assess the array of critical systems and languages today? Oh, boy. <laughs> um, A small question. <laughs> I think, you know, just sort of anything, everybody's very disillusioned with mainstream theory, yeah. I guess, in a way. And on the other hand, nothing has really replaced it that mm. well. You know, now that you have this proliferation of eco-criticism, mm. which is the one I like least, yeah. um, eco-criticism just makes me want to go back to good old, some of the good old <laughs> things we used to have, Marxist criticism, whatever, because I think it's so peripheral. It's, it's not really literary in a way. So mm -hmm. I don't know what will really come next, but it seems to me there is a return to a lot of things. There's a return to phenomenological criticism. Mm -hmm. I think people are very interested in it again. Mm -hmm. And um, there's going to be a return to, uh, I think, Russian formalism and the various mm -hmm. Russian theories and close reading theories. I don't mean the new criticism necessarily, but to go back to look at that people are now so, sort of being amazed that, oh, I.A. Richards, he was pretty interesting. Yeah. I heard James Chandler say at Chicago the other day. So so I don't know quite where it's going, mm -hmm. the proliferation systems. But it's a shame because you do have to have theory. Mm -hmm. I mean, without literary theories, they really, you know, then it's really anarchic. Then people just don't know what to talk about. And they just talk about literature as if it's just an information mm -hmm. source or something. I think the new digital, some of the new digital theories are interesting. Some of the things that are going on, Alan Liu, some of those mm. things that are going Catherine on. Hales. Yeah. Catherine Hales. Catherine yeah. Hales. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. And science, literary studies, very big. Mm. Many of these things are big, but how telling they are, how useful they are, I don't know. You know, mm. then they sort of return to aesthetics. Mm. Um, and. Uh, well, you, uh, that reminds me um, when you mentioned I.A. Richards. Maybe maybe a couple of decades after him, when when Fry started talking about there being a centripetal versus centrifugal sense of how criticism yeah. approaches the the, the text, uh, he found himself trying to hold things together <laughs> uh, he did. As, as well. I love Northrop Fry actually. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I don't know if people read him much anymore. My sense is they don't. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that, yeah. But shame, he was but. a great. Because he did try to include everything and bring it into a larger system, which yeah. of course never quite works. Any system is always broken down, and then there's another system. Yeah. So, and some are more useful than others. I think um, what's happened in the United States is a kind of overkill of Adorno mm -hmm. and the Frankfurt School, much as I love much of the Frankfurt School, and I use Benjamin a lot. I'm writing on Benjamin myself right mm -hmm. now. But I do think that has been. Um, a kind of overkill for various reasons. It's a good question how much it applies to American things. After mm. all, Adorno himself never read an American work, I don't think, mm. or even, even an English work. Mm. And so um, there's a kind of way that that very kind of elite system, and it is a very elite system with all the, its talk, um, is so applicable. I think there's a lot of interest in pragmatism now. I heard an excellent session mm. at MLA 
one of the best sessions I heard in MLA this year was on pragmatism with Ross Posnock, mm -hmm. Joe Richardson. It was very, very interesting and, and applicable to a lot that's going on. So that was, you know, there is much interest now in that. Mm -hmm. Good people working on that. So I think that's an exciting thing that's going on mm -hmm. that'll be interesting for the I don't know, what does the Society of Critical Exchange focus on? I, I'm not sure. Well, because we've you know, made the transition very recently, yeah. we're still trying to get our, get yeah. our hands around this. I mean, I've yeah. been looking You're back, a theorist. Yeah. 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 And, and I've been looking uh, um, back over what the society had done. And my sense is that some of the founders feel as though they've had illustrative failures uh, in the past. That uh, they, they did so much economic criticism, so much it, Marxist criticism, of yeah. a very you know kind of hardcore mm -hmm. way. I don't think people want to do that anymore as much. Well, <clears throat> I would guess. My my sense is that uh, the the move is more towards um, a collaborative learning model that says here is a particular topic. How many different discourses can we get to analyze it, and that. You know, um, what the exchange does is bring together all the exchange, all those discourses, and then provide a forum uh, for them, so that you know, the, the topic will shift, yeah. but not the mechanism of, of bringing all these things together. So I think the society That's may be moving more towards providing that structure, yeah, rather than anything else. But but certainly there are pet projects <laughs> that that we have that we like to promote. And uh, you know, what are the? Can I ask? Well, uh, one one of the things we, we we've been thinking about is uh, the whole area of trauma and how do we understand trauma? Because uh, as I'm not sure as as you're aware, um, trauma plays such a big role in memory, and memory, of course, yeah. plays such a big role in yeah. poetry and yeah. and fiction. Uh, yeah. So how do we assess, yeah. understand, represent yeah, trauma? Yeah, that's a good topic. Um, and um, our first. Um, Winter Theory Institute is planned around the topic of terror and the campus and education. And uh, we're, we're, we've slated it for uh, February of 2010, of, of next yeah. year. So we're trying to get started on that. Uh -huh. yeah. uh -huh. um, we're thinking both in terms of um, actual acts of terror as well as the kind of uh, uh, chilling effect that various homeland security pronouncements have had yeah. on on talking about talking about it, various yeah. topics that and the whole idea of war on terror yeah which is questionable yeah. as a phrase yeah yeah, yeah. so that's yeah. that's those those are a couple of areas where we're looking into. Uh -huh. yeah. uh -huh. I, I wanted to ask you, you mentioned MLA and you of course were, were president uh, yeah. in 2006 yeah um, uh, the, the SEE was, was also formed as a response to, to this institutional and, and disciplinary power <laughs> of, of, the, yeah. of the MLA. Yeah, I think it's Nana, good. Having been the president, uh, oh, I think that? it is, I th think it, uh, I, I have to say, I guess off, well, all right, on the record, <laughs> um, it, it, was, it was a very hard place to work mm. in a way because it's so institutionalized that's mm. it, that the, nothing can even come up. Everything is always going to be done the same way. Mm -hmm. And you ask, well, why are we doing it this way? Because we've always done it that way. Now, the truth is very little policy is made. Mm -hmm. You spend all those meetings at the MLA discussing the budget or some little issue mm -hmm. will come up or are we going to let, how are we going to have the vote for the editor of PMLA mm -hmm. or how are we going to elect the board, you know? Mm -hmm. In other words, you're so busy with procedure mm -hmm. that as far as ideas circulating go, there are no ideas circulating. I mean, right. they really aren't, pretty much. There's n there are new procedures, there are new task forces, when, what, when to have the convention, you know, that whole kind of thing, right. whether to let each group have two meetings or three meetings. But as far as any real discussion of issues, mm. that almost doesn't happen.